What's going on, folks? Algebra 2, we're going to be starting up on functions today. All right, you guys have been mentioning problems, and you guys are saying, hey, there's a whole bunch of problems with the homework you made. And I will say, you know what? I don't know if you've had me before, but for those of you who had have me before, um, let me just say that Mr. Dalde doesn't often talk about himself in third person, but Mr. Dalde has no problem with saying that Mr. Dalde is an idiot and Mr. Dalde makes all kinds of mistakes. So if there is a problem that I made, a mistake that I made, then uh, table it for the end, and I'll answer those questions at the end. Sound good? But for now, I want to get into my lesson and then go into those problems and talk and fix all of those things, and then give you guys credit, oodles of extra credit, because you guys all found all of these mistakes for me. And I'm totally fine with this. I have not found any problems so far with the homework and quizzes? Okay, good, Jenna, because actually a few of you have found problems. And I think Lucas brought one up to me earlier today. He basically said, hey, one of those questions that you asked me to write a response to was a true-false question. And there is no true, or it was a multiple-choice question or something like that. And I couldn't write the reason why because, you know. And, and I said, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, anyway. Um... And she is, so maybe that's why. All right, all right, cool. Yeah, Lucas, I fixed that anyway. So I made it an essay question. It was worth zero points to begin with, so I didn't have to go back and change everything, which is not to say don't do the zero point ones. You guys know that that's one you guys should do. Let's talk about functions today, shall we? All right. What we need to do, and I need to make sure that you folks are all on the same page with this. I'm going to start teaching you guys things off the top of my head, and then we'll go through the curriculum. All right. Now, a function is a relationship. It relates one thing to another. It's like a machine. You basically tell it you it, it you have an input and you have an output. So I'm going to draw my little picture here. Oh no! Come on, computer. Catch up. One second. Do you see that word "not responding" above my paint thing? That means my computer is slow. I'm sorry, my computer is slow. Just give it a second. It'll figure it out. Any way times can move on free in the middle of the day. Um, I'll be honest with you, I cannot move this time. It's not, um, this is something that was told to me, not something I just made up. And the reason why they have these times as for the classes is really because um, you shouldn't have anything during this time because um, your other classes should be scheduled around your time in this class. So the only other class that's being taught at the same time is AP Calculus. And I'm assuming that if you're in Algebra 2, you're not in AP Calculus as well. Does that make sense? Whereas if I move this class to a different time, that might not be the case. All right, anyway, let's get this party started. So a function has an input and an output. All right, all right. Have you folks ever, hmm, what is the best way for me to teach you folks about functions? All right, I'll teach you, I'll teach you some notation and then I'm gonna go into discussion about functions because I think this is actually really important. And it's a little ridiculous, but it's important. Um, a function is written down like this, f of x. This does not mean f times x. This means f as it depends on x. Recognize that notation. I could have a different kind of function, for example, g of x or h of x. You'll often see those. But f of x is like the y value. Yes, it is your output. Bradley, if you can't see my screen, does anyone else have a problem seeing my screen? Okay, um, then Bradley, what you're going to need to do is probably shuffle those windows around until you can see the screen that says desktop sharing. I'll try to reset it for you right now. I don't know if that's, let's see, it's default layout. Does that work for you? Can you now see my computer screen? 
All right, anyway, all right. But what I want you to really understand, all right, I'm sorry, Bradley, what you might have to do is log out and log back in. Because if other people aren't having trouble, then it tells me that the problem's on your side, not mine. Which is not to say that's your problem. Oh, this is your problem, you deal with it. But I'm just saying, I don't know how to fix it on my side. All right. If you can use the presentation meeting. Okay, okay, all right. Oh, let's see. On the bottom right hand corner, it says default layout. Is that what you have? What if we go to lecture? What happens then? Okay. Oh, okay, all right, you figured it out? All right, we'll just stick with that. All right, let's see. Okay, so. What I want you to do is I want you to understand how to read this. This is F of X. It's pronounced F of X. And the way I think about it is F as it depends on X. Okay, now that's really important. Um, functions have a property and here's the property. Um, functions can only have one output for one input. Okay? All right. Here's, here's kind of the, the idea that I have behind it. And here's, here's the story that I have behind it. I'm going to tell you two stories today. Um, one, someone, uh, I think it was Emily, she came in today and said, hey, I need help with functions. I need help with this idea of understanding uh, of functions. And I, and I said, okay, here's my example that I'll give you. Say, Emily, that you work for the UPS store. It's the, the post office people, right? And so the UPS store charges maybe this much money. This is the function that they gave you. And then what they did was they said, okay, well, here's how many pounds you're going to pay. So one, two, three, four, and I'll put LBS down here. And then here's how much money you're going to pay. 10, 20, this is dollars on this side. Does that make sense? So Emily comes in and um, she, she's, she's working at the front and you bring in a package that is two pounds and say, Emily, how much is it going to cost if I, if I want to send a two pound package? So Emily looks on her, on her sheet and she says, oh, okay, two pounds means da, 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 it yields $10. So she's going to say, oh, that would just be 10 bucks. Sound good? This is a function. Right, right, and, and you're, you're familiar with this. This is not crazy new stuff. Okay, so are we, are we cool with this idea? And then how much would it be, get, tell me about how much would it be um, if, if you brought in a four pound package? It'd be about 20 bucks, right? You look at the table over here, it starts up four, you go up and then you go across, that's 20 pounds. Now, she said, okay, but Emily thinks that this guy named, I think it was like Drake O'Brien or something like that. She thinks that guy is hot. That's what she told me this morning. Dylan, is it Dylan O'Brien or something? I don't know, it's something O'Brien. I remember. He's an actor, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say Justin Bieber, but, you know, I'm not cool with the kids nowadays. All right. So let's say that Dylan O'Brien walks in to the UPS store. All right. And, and, and he's, he's all like super good looking or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and Emily says, wait a second. Okay. Since Dylan O'Brien's in here, he brings in a four pound package. I'm only gonna charge him like a dollar, right? And then Mr. Dalday's the next in line, right? So she doesn't like Mr. Dalday. So um, Mr. Dalday brings in his four pound package that he needs to, to send. And she's like, I'm gonna charge you like $50 because you're a really tough teacher. 
You know what I mean? So, so wait a second, wait a second. For the same input, I have two different outputs. That broke the rules. You know what I mean? How do you decide? How do you decide if one person brings in a four pound package if they were, were to get two different kinds of outputs? And how do you decide who gets the cheaper one? Is it depending on how good they look? Because I'll tell you, man, based on my looks, I should be getting the 25 cent package deal. All right, anyway, do you, do you guys see what I'm saying? It breaks the rules. So for this one input, and this particular input that we're talking about is $4, you can only have one output that is associated with it. And yes, this is totally math. But for, now, that being said, for two different inputs, you could have the same output, Let's say, let's say, for example, that um, let's say, for example, that you have a function that looks like this, and I say, well, how much do I have to, and what pounds I need to bring in in order to make uh, ten dollars or something like that? Well, the answer would be whatever this x value is and whatever this x value is. So this is still a function, right here. Does that make sense? Or, or here's, a, here's a really good example. Here, how's about this? This is a function. Let's say, let's graph what, uh, what it would look like, and this is, goes into the application of math. Okay, let's graph what it would look like if I threw a basketball in the air and just let it fall. So there's the path, all right? At what time is it exactly 10 feet in the air? Let's say 10 feet over here. Well, it would be 10 feet in the air at that exact time right there, and also at that exact time right there. There are two different inputs for the same output, and that's totally fine. But what you cannot have is two different outputs for the same input. That would be like Emily charging different prices depending on how hot the person is walking into the, the store. That would be against the rules. But if you had two different, if you told me an output and you asked which inputs give me that output, you could tell me multiple ones and that would be perfectly fine. Still a function. Are we cool with that? All right. What's the definition of a function? You know what? Um, a function, I, we can read it right here. It's in your text. A functions arise very naturally in the world. They are relationships. There's an input and an output. Uh, I don't know if they tell you exactly what a function is. Okay. A function is a collection of inputs and outputs, pairs, such that, or, such that for each pair there's exactly one output. So every input has exactly one output. That's what they're saying. They're saying it's a relationship between this number and that number. And you can only give, for every one input you give me, I can only give you one output out. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, there's a good way to test a function graphically, if you look at a graph. And I'm sure that you learned this back when you were kids is um you ever hear the vertical line test okay all you would do the vertical line test is you go got exactly you get out a pencil and you put it on your screen and then you keep that pencil vertical and then you move that pencil across the thing across the function if that line if that vertical line touches that graph at any more than one point, it is not a function. So this graph right here, this graph is a function. But what if I started doing this? Is that a function? 
No, it's not a function because if I move my vertical line right here, it's touching at this point up here and this point down here. That's where you're going to get a problem. Or I think in one of your homework problems, option D was like this. It was a sideways parabola. Is that a function? No. Okay. Now, some vocabulary. Because our, when we talk about inputs, we say the word domain. And have you guys ever heard the word domain before? It's like, what if, what if I were a father and I were to say, that this, I am the king of my domain. What does that mean to you? This is my, this is my domain. Step off. What does that mean? This is my house. This is, and this, not only is this my house, this is who I am allowing in my house and who, and, and I get to decide who I allow in my house and who doesn't get to be in my house because it's my house. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of what you make, it makes you think, right? And you'll find, by the way, that Mr. Dalde is kind of an over-the-top teacher. I, 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 teach, I teach in ways where I, I talk about these ridiculous stories and these kinds of things. And it's really because I want to remember you to remember these things. So I'm talking about, this is my house. Get out of my domicile. This is my domain. Okay, when you're talking about domain, you're setting rules for what is allowed to come in. And what is allowed to and what is not allowed to come in, right? Well, that's what domain is in math. It's it, it's a rules for what is a, what kind of values are allowed inside of your equation. For example, there is a domain issue when you have things like the square root of x, y equals the square root of x. And I'll probably write this as f of x equals the square root of x. It's the same thing. And here's where those domain issues fall. I'll tell you where. Negative numbers. This particular graph, this particular function, likes only positive numbers. Because there's no such thing as a negative square root. Right? So, I'll tell you what the graph looks like. It looks like this. So what is the domain for this particular function? Square. Yeah, yeah, the square root of 4 is either 2 or negative 2, but what I'm saying is the x values that you can put in, you cannot put in negative 4 into there. I can't take the square root of negative 4. That's what I'm saying here. Sophia, you're on the right track, but kind of talking about something different exactly the three that you answered Carmen Bianca or Cameron Bianca Bradley uh, Jenna yes you're absolutely right there is not no negatives allowed in fact actually I'll be honest with you Bradley you have a better answer than the rest of you the, the folks you can't uh, because you can take the square root of zero that's fine so I like the way you said it better non-negative because if you just say positive that doesn't include zero so technically, Bradley's the only one that's right. It's not a negative number. I agree with you completely. For Cameron, Bianca, Jenna, I agree with you most of the way. <laughs> yes, suck it. All right, all right, fine. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was inappropriate, but uh, yeah, all right. So that's the domain. Now, the related, a, a domain is related to uh, a certain value coming out and in this case that certain value that you know since a function relates something that you put in to something that comes out your if you're limiting what you put in only a certain amount of things can come out does that make sense and if only a certain amount of things that can come out then that has a certain set of rules on what can come out of a function and in this case it would be that's called the range. So anytime I'm talking about the domain, I'm talking about the x values, usually. I'm talking about the input values. When I'm talking about the domain or the range, I'm talking about the output values, also known as the y values. And there's a certain set of rules that are on those. 
For example, say that I go back to throwing my uh, basketball. Okay? And that is not a function, so I'm going to erase this bottom half. All right, here's my question to you. At what time, and say that this happens at 40 seconds. So I don't know. It's a weird basketball because it, it took a really long time to go up in the air, and it actually took a two-minute flight path, even though it only went up like 15 feet. Anyway, I probably should have chosen four seconds or maybe 0.4 seconds or whatever. It's a weird basketball. Um, here's my question to you, though, is at what time does this basketball reach 30 feet? At what time does this basketball reach 30 feet? Never. I love it. Exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't ever get to 30 feet. I mean, even if it were to bounce and it would just keep on going, it wouldn't bounce higher, right? So there's a problem. There's a, there's a limitation on your range at this point. Now, because we're talking about the Y values, what possible Y values can I get out of this? Well, I would say your range is between probably like zero, between zero and maybe 13 feet or something like that. Well, Sophia, I would say that if the reason why I can tell that it doesn't reach 30 feet is because if this is 0 to 10, then 30 feet would be way up here. And obviously, it doesn't go way up there. Does that make sense? Yes, I agree. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the range. Oh, okay. All right. So I talked about the domain. I talked about the range. And I, I basically have taught you math through stories. Now, let me tell you this story. And I'm going to try to do this really quick because I love this story, but I don't have the time to probably share it. I need to finish at exactly, uh, wait, today's class supposed to be at 125. Okay. I need to, I, I'm going to stay off a little bit, but I, I'm going to stay after a little bit. But here's my story, okay? Has anyone ever eaten katsu? Yes or no? I want an answer from everybody. Yes, 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 yes. Sophia, you've never eaten katsu? What? Really? Huh. Oh, that's, uh, I, hey, that's cool. I know, I know, I know Sophia likes Ario Speedwagon, so that's actually, that redeems it. Okay. Um, all right. So you haven't eaten katsu. Okay. Um, I want to ask, have you lived in Hawaii for very long? Because I was, people live, eat katsu. All right. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Anyway. So. If you don't know what katsu is, um, I mean, do you know what katsu is, by the way? I'm just wondering. Uh, kind of. Okay. All right. So I'll explain to you what katsu is. For those of you who've never, um, never had katsu or don't know what it is, I'll explain it to you. Okay. You take chicken. It's a raw chicken. You cut it up. You take it and you put some... Um, you put um, some olive oil on it or some kind of oil on it. I like to uh, smash it up. I like to put it in egg, a little bit, you know, like an egg wash kind of thing. Put the raw chicken in an egg. And then I take it and put it inside of a Japanese breadcrumbs. And then I fry it in a pan. So I pan fry it in a lot of oil. And, and then, you know, and, and, and it, it crisps up, crisp up kind of like regular fried chicken, which I hope you've had as well. Yeah. Um, it, it gets all crispy and then you serve it on top of rice and you put a special sauce on it and it's just, it's so tasty. I'm hungry right now. Do you understand what katsu is now? Okay. All right. Good. Has anyone ever had, okay. So everyone's had chicken katsu and I asked, have you ever eaten katsu? And everyone said yes. Um, and I'm assuming that you've eaten chicken katsu. Have, has anyone ever eaten pork katsu? Yes. Okay. No. Okay. I'm getting a few more no's this time than yeses. Um, but here's my question is, what do you think pork katsu is? 
By the way, I think that's called tonkatsu. It's actually a thing. Yeah. All right, Kukahi, I agree with you. You, you, and Sophia, I totally agree with you. You do the same exact thing as you did chicken katsu. However, you're using uh, pork, raw pork. You take raw pork, cut it up, put it on the fry, egg batter it, and then uh, breadcrumbs and fry it up, and you're good. Okay. Has anyone had fish katsu? Okay. All right. Now here's my question. I'm going to start going, uh, getting quick about these things. What is fish katsu? You've never had it, most of you. What is it? I bet it's still the same thing except with what? Except with fish. Very good. Awesome. Has anyone ever had escargot katsu? That would be snails katsu. No. Gross. Okay. What about, what about human hand katsu? Have you ever had that? Like I hear that's uh, very popular amongst cannibals. Okay. All right. No, thank you. Right. Okay. Um, but but you can imagine what that is, right? You take a human hand before you get arrested, of course. You cut it up, slice it up, put it inside the thing. I can't tell you how it tastes. I've never had it, and I can't tell you whether or not it tastes like chicken. But I'm just saying, you know. All right. So here's my question. <laughs> I love Bianca's question. Um, don't worry, Bianca. I have a point. Here's my question to you, is what is katsu? Is katsu a food? There we go, Jenna. It's a, it's a process. Chicken katsu is a food, I agree with that. But katsu itself is a way of making it. It's a style, I, I like that. It's not a food. It's a relationship. It relates one thing to another. There's an input and then output. The input is raw meat of some sort. The output is some amazing tasty meal. But katsu itself is not a food. So by the way, when I asked originally, have any of you eaten katsu? And most of you said yes, and a few of you said no, and then we thought the people who said no were crazy. They were actually the only ones who were correct. Because you can't eat katsu. Katsu is not a food. Katsu is a relationship. Katsu is a function. That's what a function is. It relates one thing to another. I would make like my, if I write, wrote the katsu uh, function down, I would say K of meat, where K stands for katsu and meat stands for meat. So I could have K of chicken. I could also have K of lizard. Not a very popular one on the on the uh, menu. I could have K of um, I I could have K of um, crocodile. Very popular in the South, mind you. So, what I'm saying is, and and do you see how my notation works? This is a relation between one to another, and it relates. Yeah, exactly. K of bat is bat katsu. I, I, and, and admittingly, the most popular one is chicken katsu. In fact, it's so popular that most of the people that I ask a question like, have you ever had katsu, immediately think of chicken katsu. And so, yes, they say, yes, I've had chicken katsu. But... Katsu itself is not a food. It is a function. It relates one thing to another. There is an input and an output, but it's still a relation. You can't eat it. You can't multiply it. You can't whatever. You have to treat it like a relationship. That's Bradley, you asked me what is a function, and I would say that's my definition of a function. And here's, here's the thing. Is there a domain issue on katsu? Or on, yeah. Does my katsu function have a domain? 
Bradley says no. I disagree. Because I've never made car engine katsu. Nor have I made uh, headphone katsu. Or hat katsu. Yeah. So, exactly, Cameron. The katsu um, is has a domain issue. The domain is what needs to come in is meat. Does that make sense? And and here's another thing about this thing. Yes, yes. So the limit is meat. I can only put meat into this process. I don't want to put uh, carburetor oil into my katsu machine. Okay. Um, what about this? Is there a range, or I mean, is there a certain, um, is there a set amount of things that can come out when you put one thing in? If I give you, if I put chicken into this process, can I get out chicken sometimes and lizard katsu other times? No, no. And you, you see, that's, that's, that's where this rules on this function come in. For every input, I can only have one kind of output. If I put in exactly chicken, I can only have output of, of chicken katsu. Now, maybe there's multiple ways of getting to chicken katsu. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if I put in pigeon, and like, if I'm like full on like shady, Mr. Shady restaurant, and I have a restaurant out in Chinatown, and I go off and get like the pigeons that are in the back, and I serve that up as chicken katsu, and be like, well, it's just chicken katsu. Ha! I don't even go off and buy my chicken katsu. I could still serve that up, and it would have different inputs. I could have, you know, one day I could have pigeons, and the other day I could have peacocks, because that's what I ran over on my way to work. And then I, the other day I could have, like, actual chickens that I bought from a stuff. But I put it all on my menu as chicken katsu. That's fair. That would be having multiple inputs for the same output. But you cannot have multiple outputs for the same input. Does that make sense? Now that one's a little bit more uh, advanced to think about. Okay, good. All right, so Bradley, to bring it back, and I think it was Bradley, or uh, I forgot who exactly answered, asked this question, but... Um, Where's the math? Well, this is how it brings it all back. I know that I teach in weird ways and, and all of those kinds of things, but this is how I bring it all back. Now, I wish I could spend more time with you, but I hate to say it, I'm out of time, but what I would really like to do is sit down with you. We haven't really done all these example problems yet, and um, if, if I'm going too fast, like if the homework is coming up faster than I can lecture, then I'll push back the homework. I'm fine with doing that. Um, my question to you now is I think that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it up to questions and say well why don't we take a look at the homework and see which ones you're having trouble with and then we'll say I'll, I'll tell you whether or not um, those are you mean yeah remember your questions I think you said something about 1.4 and 1.7 all right, Bradley's going to miss chemistry class today. Uh, it looks to me like a lot of you folks in my Algebra 2 class are also in my chemistry class. Boy, that wasn't a very uh, nice thing to do to you, huh? To give you Mr. Dalde for two courses? That sounds terrible. All right, anyway. Um, or 1.5, I think. All right, here we go. I need help on packet 1.7, number 4. Why don't we take a look at that one first? Bianca? And I apologize if I if I get your name wrong or whatever. Um, I'm new to this. All right, why don't we take a look at that? Because it could very well be that I just screwed up writing the problem down. Uh, question number four. Oh. 
Is question number four an essay question? Oh. Wait. This is 1.7. Homework funk 1.7. You're talking about the handout then. Wait a second, I'm, I'm confused. Question number four is explain your response. And what you need to answer is, the linear function d of t is defined as a distance you still need to travel, uh, travel to to arrive at your de destination. T minutes into your trip, assuming you travel a constant. Is this, oh, oh, I think that I talked about this with somebody. Oh, it's question seven? Okay, all right. But for this particular problem, I think I talked about this one. Actually, the answer is negative, I think. The slope is negative. And, and, and I think that when I, when I recorded a video on it last year, I said it was positive. dt gets smaller and as t gets I love the, Sophia's explanation is perfect your distance the way we define distance is we said it's the distance you still need to go as you travel I'm assuming that distance gets smaller as time goes on does that make sense so if your distance gets smaller as time goes on and we're we're saying we're talking about a function here where the input is time, but your output is distance that I still need to travel. That graph's going to look like that. And if that graph looked like that, that's a negative slope. However, I screwed up last year when I said it was a positive slope. But when you read the problem and you think about it, no, that's a negative slope. Now those are the kind of mistakes of when Mr. Dalde lectured last year. That that I you know I can't vouch for. He was an idiot. All right. Anyway, you need help on number four, the PT one. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at number seven. And yes, this is due later on. This isn't due. I mean, this is due. I think tomorrow. So I mean, I'm kind of giving you guys question answers or whatever. Um, all right, here we go. Suppose P of T represents the amount of money you save after two years. I right, use the function notation to represent the fact that the amount of money you reach in your account after five years is 400 more than your initial deposit. Hmm. Which one did you guys answer? I think it's D. Or at least this one. I don't know what. Because, hmm. Let, let's try this. Let's, let's try this. All right, Sophia? Um, Sophia is saying none of those are correct. And I'm saying I disagree with you. Um. Sophia, let's put in a number for t. Let's say t is equal to 0. All right? Then option D, would, would I would write that down like this. P, oh, I'm sorry, P of 5 equals P of 0 plus 400. Sound good? I just said, what if t equals 0? Okay. 
Then option D would write, I would just plug in t equals 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5, so it's p of 5 plus equals p of 0 plus 400. Now, p of 0, you still need a number, so tell me what number goes in there? Like $1,000? How much money did you put in, how much money did you put in at 0 years to begin with? Let's say $1,000. P of 0 is 1000 $1,000. Okay, then what is P of 5? Well, it's 1,000 plus 400, so that would be $1,400. Doesn't that, doesn't that make sense with, your, with that statement to say five years later, it's going to make $400 more? So if I put in $1,000 to begin with, I'm going to have $1,400 coming out? So I would say that D is the best option. All right, and then question eight, that's an essay question. You folks, now that I explained that to you, why don't you folks tell me what your answer is? All right, what's the difference between C and D? Well, let's see. The difference between C and D is, why don't we try our, 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 answer, our, our thing again? What if we plug in T equals zero? Then option C would look like this. P of 0 is equal to P of 5 plus 400. When I'm looking at this, it's telling me that my initial investment is going to equal what my investment equals in 5 years plus 400. That's a problem because that's telling me, well, not... It's not that that doesn't make sense. It's telling me that I lost $400 in five years. Right? Because it's telling me that if I want to get back my initial investment, I have to take what my investment is in, four, in five years and add $400 to that. That's basically a fancy way of saying, in five years, you lost $400. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense to you, Sophia? Now, I'll be, well, actually, I was going to say, I'll be honest with you, I didn't, don't think I highlighted this too much in my homework. And, all right, here, I'll tell you this. I'll be honest with you, this idea of this function notation is important for you to know, but not important for Algebra 2. It's definitely important for you when you get to pre-calculus and calculus. Understanding how to write this stuff down is very important. Why did I give it to you in Algebra 2 homework? Well, because I kind of wanted you to remember it, but I'm not going to probably... Actually, I'm not going to hold myself to that either. I, I was going to say I probably won't give you a test on it, but that's not true. Is it on the SAT? Yes, I believe that this kind of problem could be on the SAT. Guaranteed. Well, I guarantee that it could be on the SAT. I, I'm not saying I guarantee that it's on the SAT. All right. Was there any other mistakes? Because I haven't found a single mistake yet. All right. Lucas is saying you're not adding five years to original T. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, yeah, actually... Sophia, this is what you're trying to write down. After five years, you make 400 more than P of T. You make 400 more dollars than your original investment. Yes. So what you're doing is, hmm, I guess here's another way to think about this. This is P of T, correct? So what kind of values need to go inside here? What kind of input, what's the domain that we're talking about here? Yes, five can go in, but what, what, what are the units of five? What are you talking about? Five cows? Five years, exactly. 
T represents time. So I think that one of the things that Lucas was saying or, or uh, Sophia was saying is you're not adding the five years to the money. You're adding the five years to the time. So the five has to go inside here. You don't add the 400 into that time part. Yeah. Yes, class is over. This is extra. This is me trying to fix mistakes that you guys thought you found but didn't actually find. Um, class, I, I need to mention this. Class on Wednesdays is two hours long. That's what I, in the schedule I sent out, right? Class will not always be two hours long. Class will only be two hours long on the days we have lab. But um, on the days we don't have lab, class is probably going to be 40 minutes or however long the Monday class is. I just put it out there so that if I had the option, I, would, I could go over extra time. And what lab is, is I found that students do really well when they come in physically to see me. So um, what I want you to do when we have lab days is actually come in and sit with class. And I'll probably see if I can have a project for you folks to do as a team, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I found students do really well in the face-to-face -face environment. So if there's ever a time where you folks want to come in and sit next to me while I'm teaching class, by all means, bring it on. I enjoy it. All right? I am on Oahu, though. That's the problem. Yeah, sorry, Bradley. Your best option is the face to face, or is the virtual class. But ask Jenna. She's had me before, and she's off island. I'm I'm kind of fun on, online as well. All right. Any other questions? I'm kind of staying. Um, I'm kind of staying extra time over and I again I apologize if I, I apologize if I haven't gotten back to you yet I apologize if I've made a mistake on the on the quizzes I will try to fix those as soon as I get uh, a chance to all right Willa what's your question Mr. Dalde at ethomson.org will work the best for me. Will chemistry classes be around the same time? Yes. Um, I have it set up so that on lab days, you will come in for Algebra 2 and Chemistry on the same day. Uh, it says you have overdue assignments from 2014. Those are dates that I apparently didn't catch and we'll need to go off and delete. I apologize for having those things up. I will try to fix those. Can you tell me which ones or send me a screenshot as to what you see? All right, send me a screenshot. All right, I'll talk to you folks later. We're way over time for class. Yeah, I'll see you. Alright, goodbye. Okay,